What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today we're checking out the brand new Asus ZenBook S14 with the Intel Core Ultra 9 Series 2 processor. It is the first computer featuring this brand new processor announced at IFA. So as someone who has followed the ZenBook, the Vivo Book, and the rest of the Asus lineup with OLED displays for most of 2024, we've seen all these different iterations of Snapdragon, of AMD, and I mean it is a really exciting year for computers because they're all great in their own ways, depending on your specific needs. Whether that is efficiency, value price point, or gaming and productivity, there is something for you in this lineup. And in front of me, I have what I would consider my favorite size in laptops, and that is the 14 inch form factor. So for starters, take a look at the design. It is a beautiful finish. And this right here is carved out of aluminum and I have it in the light color. And I mean, it's gotta be one of the best engineered and detailed computers that I've checked out to date. And that has been the same across the ZenBook lineup. You have this thin bezel in the middle, you have an OLED display that is 14 inches. But as you flip it around to the other side, you'll see that the computer is enclosed in a material called Seraluminum, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later and and the science behind that, but in essence, it is a durable laptop that is lightweight, shows no fingerprints, and has a very premium build, especially with the chamfered channels that go all the way across, as well as the way that they carved out the vent above the keyboard. In a world where laptops are very similar and consistent, Asus has taken something and instead of changing it completely, have combined a compound of metals and machinery practices to be able to benefit not only the durability, but the lightweight efficiency and the cooling benefits that in turn gives you better performance overall when it comes to the computer, even when it is relatively minor. On the sides, you're gonna find a dual Thunderbolt 4 port, a full-size HDMI, 3.5 millimeter, and USB-A on the other side. Some of the other aspects of hardware also come in the keyboard. This features an ErgoSense keyboard that has a 0.2 millimeter recess in the middle that directs your fingers to the center of the key for faster and more accurate typing. It's a small detail that is really hard to notice and one that I didn't really look into until I heard about it. And it also has a large, nicely sized trackpad that takes advantage of the full perimeter of the front surface. On top of that, the top here has all of these little cut micro vents that have been machine engineered in a way to be able to provide better cooling, but also avoid dust and other debris from falling in. This backlit keyboard is also really beautiful, amazing to type on, and you also have a quad speaker setup that is built in Harman Kardon and Dolby Atmos certified. When it comes to the display, this is also another area where this laptop excels. And it's why I originally thought that this is like the ultimate combination of productivity and multimedia. For any students looking for a Windows laptop, you're gonna get extended battery life, sometimes up to two days if you're just casually using it. But a lot of that is thanks to the OLED panel. Having an OLED screen is obviously more power efficient. And with a power efficient mission of the Intel chip, it comes together in giving you that ultimate battery life that without the OLED display, it is not exactly able to deliver to that record claim. The only disadvantage I would say being an OLED panel is that it peaks at 500 nits, which is pretty standard for a lot of super slim laptops with OLED screens. Good for indoor use, but in outdoor uses, usually you would need like a peak brightness of over a thousand nits. On top of that though, it is 120 hertz. And so with a faster refresh rate, it is a bit of a trade-off where it does draw a bit more power, but even for general productivity. As someone who doesn't plan to game on like a laptop like this, I find that I do enjoy having the higher refresh rate just because it is what we're used to on a lot of our everyday devices as well. The most exciting part perhaps though is the Intel Core Ultra 9 Series 2 processor. It is their latest generation, the Lunar Lake processors, and we're seeing it for the first time right here. Not only does it deliver CPU performance at lower wattages in line with Apple's M3, but it also delivers the highest GPU performance seen in an internal GPU, as well as record battery life numbers. So let's go into some of the details. The focus of this x86 chip is geared towards the efficiency, and the GPU inside is the Intel Arc 140 volt integrated GPU, and the chip delivers really good gaming performance, and that is kind of shown through the inclusion of a 120 hertz OLED display, which even though it has some productivity benefits, you really notice that extra 
extra refresh rate through gaming. When it came to general productivity tasks, typically we would run stuff such as Photoshop, DaVinci, Lightroom, and video editing is a big focus. And even though some of the other Asus laptops that we've checked out were able to run 4K editing relatively smoothly, the integrated GPU in this case, and some of the advantages that it has over its competitors, does show when it comes to rendering, where every little bit of power helps. And when it comes to exporting files, when it comes to running your next clip, running different effects, pasting effects, and as someone who does a lot of that, often at higher resolutions than 4K. This is something that can handle that, but definitely not at the degree compared to having a dedicated GPU. What I'm trying to say though, is for any prosumer out there who's looking for a beautiful display laptop where you can really reference the colors and enjoy and scroll through multimedia, you're able to be able to handle it pretty impressively on this laptop. On the efficiency aspect, the claim is up to 27 hours of battery life when it comes to video playback. Typically we're used to seeing 16, 18, and throughout the years of Evo laptops that I've checked out, I've been really impressed with the battery life. But what is impressive here is that not only is it an extremely powerful CPU with integrated GPU elements, but the battery life claim is in line with a computer that typically isn't associated with this amount of power. For general prosumer use, you can expect to comfortably get through an entire day. What is usually like an eight hour battery life on a pretty good battery life computer is now 10 hours. And I do believe in terms of battery battery life alone, relative to the power benchmarks, Intel is the leading company right now, just from the example right here. And there's going to be more computers that come out with the Intel Core Ultra 9, but in this example of what they put together with Asus and the ZenBook S14, it is just a very impressive display. When it comes to the actual hardware process though, and also taking a look at some of the other offerings from the current Asus lineup, let's go ahead and fly over to IFA in Berlin to show you more of what I saw there. Here we are checking out the Asus demo suite at IFA, and we're having a closer look at the Serra aluminum finish found on the ZenBook laptops. This is a finish that really intrigues me. And after checking out some of the laptops, I truly believe it is one of the best material innovations that we've seen in the laptop industry, which has traditionally gone for aluminum for many years. And I mean, aluminum is a material that makes a lot of sense. It's one that dissipates heat nicely. It is relatively lightweight and it is also beautiful, but there are certain durability and fingerprint elements to it that can always be improved. So Asus spent four years engineering this serial aluminum finish, and you can see it on the ZenBook S14 and the S16. For starters, if you take a look behind me, it is a material that starts as aluminum before it is heated up in a liquid bath with minerals. And that is what is able to fuse the compound of the ceramic and the aluminum. Ceramic has a lot of its benefits, such as durability, scratch resistance, and just adding a little bit of rigidity to the surface and you can see that on these laptops. It starts from a light finish and as the process is continued, it can go to the dark finish and that takes us to the two color options, both in a Zumaya gray and a Scandinavian white. This design language as a result gives you a more durable laptop while also being very fingerprint resistant and on top of that, they've even engineered the vents on the top of the laptop that allow for up to 30% better airflow while also looking very stylish with all of the specific perforations and its design. The design innovation of the ZenBook lineup is really showcased here at IFA, and it's really interesting to see the behind the scenes process that went into the design elements, as well as the material engineering of these laptops. While we're here, we also got to take a look at the rest of the current lineup, including the ASUS VivoBook S that we reviewed earlier this year, as well as the ProArt lineup fully on display, one that I'm really excited about. This consists of the ProArt P16, ProArt PX13, both of which featuring the new Ryzen AI processors, as well as the ProArt PZ13, which is sort of like a two-in-one, featuring the Snapdragon processor. And last but not least, we also took a look at some of the ROG Zephyrus gaming laptops, 
super sleek and beautiful, very powerful and optimized for gaming performance. The star of the show here was the ROG Ally X. This takes portable gaming to the next level with a beautiful display, tactile controls, significantly extended battery life and power, making it the all-in-one gaming platform for portable use by allowing you to access all of the different gaming ecosystems through the cloud that you may enjoy. Another big push with the Lunar Lake is unmatched AI capabilities. It now has a new integrated NPU to accelerate AI computations and generative AI. And what that essentially means is that it has a dedicated processor for AI technology. With all the talk about Microsoft AI co-pilot PCs, having a dedicated processor that is always on standby to be able to process those AI tasks for now or in the future as capabilities be able to expand, it's nice when it doesn't take away from your main processor. So what is my overall experience of this laptop? And I've checked out a lot of impressive options this year so far, and I feel like this one almost flew under the radar. Asus launched some computers over at Computex in Taipei where I had the chance to experience, and I was already very impressed by the well-rounded Asus ZenBook S16 that features the AMD Ryzen HX370 AI processors. But how I would say it compares to the Intel processor and specifically on the ZenBook S14 is that this is the ultimate all-round productivity computer that when it comes to low voltage tasks is about the same if not a little bit faster than the new Ryzen AI chips. But when it comes to high voltage, that is where the Ryzen AI has a bit of an edge. When it comes to graphics performance though and the battery life, the Intel Core Ultra 9 processor series two does have the advantage there. And that is why I believe that for any students, for productivity, people who want a game, for creatives who need that extra bit of graphics power, this is my perfect size preference for a laptop. It is just so well designed. And that is something that is throughout the lineup of any chip that you pick from Asus. But learning the engineering behind it and the improvements that Intel has made to their latest generation of Lunar Lake chips, that is kind of like a mid-cycle refresh just eight months after after the introduction of their initial Intel Core Ultra Series 1. I feel like it is definitely one to consider if you haven't already picked up a brand new laptop for this year. So as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.